everybody, it is Katie here, and it's time to talk about Shadowhunters. So episode two happened, and I took down notes this time. I actually prepared notes. I feel like this episode was very fast paced and a lot of things happened, so I had to write a few things down that I wanted to talk about in order to remember them because there was so much going on. I'll probably still forget to mention a bunch of things because I always do. I have the worst memory in existence by the way, so forgive me if I forget things. So episode two picked up immediately where we left off in episode one, Jason Valentine coming back through this portal. They've just escaped after Jace killed this vampire that he wasn't supposed to. Valentine heroically took an arrow to save Jace. You know, because Jocelyn's trying to kill him? So like I predicted last week, Valentine used that in his favour, trying to convince Jace that everyone was out to kill him. I mean, seriously, poor Jace. What kind of situation has this boy found himself in? I just want to protect him from everyone. So we get back to the Institute and Victor is kind of trying to blame Lydia for this. Victor just wants to lord it over everyone basically. He treats everyone as beneath him, including Lydia. He needs to not. We're then led into a scene between Clary and Jocelyn where Clary confronts her mum about what has just happened? Jocelyn starts trying to explain to Clary about the experiments. The demon blood thing is interesting in the show because I don't know how they're going to work it. I'm assuming it's not true and that it's actually Sebastian that has the demon blood the way it was in the books. But I liked the flashback though with the baby killing the flower. That was very interesting quite sinister. This is all leading up to Sebastian because we know that Sebastian is eventually going to come into the show and be the evil little shit that everyone thinks Jace is. So I like that they included that little flashback. That demon-blooded baby was creepy, not gonna lie. So then Simon gets called to a meeting with Victor. I'm already sick of Victor waltzing around this institute like he owns the place. He basically blackmails Simon by saying that he won't allow him in the institute anymore unless he does his bidding. My poor boy. We also get a scene between Clary and Alec in the Institute. It wouldn't be Shadowhunters without at least one scene of Alec angrily hitting a punching bag. This clip was released last week after the first episode, so I'd already seen it. But once again, there is tension between Clary and Alec with regards to Jace. And although it's harsh to see the blame being pinned on Clary, I can understand Alec's way of seeing things. He's lost his brother. His whole life has changed. And it is all because Clary walked into their lives. So I can understand the way he feels towards her and towards Jocelyn. I really liked seeing Izzy try to stand up for Clary though. Even though Alex's her brother and she will love and support him no matter what, she is more rational about the situation and tries to calm things down. And I really like that about her. So then we get this scene where trained fighters are being snatched away by Valentine. Valentine has realised that he needs stronger people for his perfect little Shadowhunter race, so he's taking the best fighters in the city. I found that a really cool scene as well with the lights coming on and off and this fighter just vanishing. It was nice, I like that scene. Back in the Institute we get this fantastic scene between Clary and Izzy. Clary is in her bedroom looking at some of her old art, obviously pondering about the way life used to be for her. Isabel comes in and and tries to reassure her that it's not her fault and that Alec doesn't mean what he's saying. I loved this scene. I just adore the relationship between Clary and Izzy in the show. It is different from the books but I love the way that they've done it. Izzy is just so supportive of Clary. I love her, I love them, I love their friendship. I love this scene. So then we get a scene with Luke back to his day job of being a cop with Alaric. Nice to see Alaric again. I don't know why, but I just really love him being a cop in the show. I think it's so cool. He's so cool. My only complaint about the season so far is that we haven't had enough of Luke. But we're only two episodes in, so there's plenty of time. I'm sure we're going to get lots of Luke this season. So Alaric makes it clear to Luke that the pack aren't happy with Simon's presence. But good old Luke, the father that everybody deserves, is determined to keep Simon safe. Bless Luke in this show. Seriously, he's just such a good person. So speaking of Simon, we get a scene of him going back to Jade Wolf and Gretel's there to give him a bit of attitude again. Simon gets a bit sassy in this scene, which 
I loved because I feel really bad for him. He hasn't really got a place where he feels comfortable at the moment. And even though Luke has made it clear that he's welcome at Jade Wolf by him, he's still feeling very pushed out by the rest of this pack. He goes back to this storage unit where he's staying and Raphael is there. I always love Raphael's scenes. I think he's a great character. However, he also wants to use Simon to get Camille because Raphael still blames Simon for her escaping in the first place. So poor Simon's being pulled in all directions, being used by everyone. Someone please help my boy. After that we go back to the boat and we meet Jeremy. Jeremy is a character we were introduced to in episode two and I don't know whether he's going to be in the show a little bit more in the future but his father was killed by a wolf so he's out for revenge, doesn't like downworlders, perfect for Valentine's shadow hunter race. Jace has a conversation with him trying to persuade him that this isn't what he wants but apparently it is what Jeremy wants. He he just wants revenge. After that we have the Lightwood siblings on their way to kick some ass. The Institute is now aware that Valentine is taking trained fighters so Alec and Izzy go to this fighting club because they think that Valentine will try and make a move on the most impressive fighter there. One of my favourite scenes of this entire episode, Izzy taking that man down. Damn, that was a scene. She took him down in like two seconds. Never underestimate Isabel Lightwood. I, I just, I love that scene. After that we have Simon being portaled into Magnus's apartment. Simon and Magnus are my bro TP. I loved them in this episode. I love that Magnus is willing to help Simon. I love the way they react to each other. They're just brilliant. Also we got like a tiny little hint about Magnus's backstory. The minute he said, when I was a boy, I was like, oh no, oh no, 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 no. I am not ready to get more of Magnus's backstory because it's sad. So you get a little hint of how hard it was for him when he was young, being a warlock. And I love the way he said that he'd made a promise to himself to help other downworlders like him in that situation. Magnus Bane. I love that warlock. So Magnus ends up taking Simon to India, as you do. In an attempt to find Camille, Simon ends up doing battle with a snake, which was actually created by Magnus. All of those scenes were really great between Simon and the snake trying to do his encanto again. Simon and Magnus provided the more lighthearted moments in this episode as well. I'm looking forward to seeing more of them working together in the future of the show because they're hilarious. In this episode we also get a scene between Jocelyn and Luke because Clary has run away from the Institute. Jocelyn immediately goes to Luke for help and we get this conversation between the two of them where Luke kind of admits that he's a bit disappointed that Jocelyn didn't tell him about the experiments Valentine was doing on the baby. I thought that was a nice scene between the two of them because Luke was being honest with Jocelyn. He wasn't sugarcoating it for her. He was kind of saying, yeah, you messed up. But he was still there for her because he loves her. Luke is too precious for this world. Too pure. So yeah, Clary has run away to art school. Just strolls in steals a few pencils and gets to work. It doesn't take Jocelyn and Luke long to find her as Jocelyn is trying to persuade Clary to get back to the Institute. Dot appears! Okay then, wasn't expecting Dot. I thought she was dead. She's not as dead as we thought, apparently. She takes Clary to Valentine's boat. Valentine is using Dot to get Clary to the boat to try and persuade Jace that he's on the right path. Dot ends up showing Clary this vision of the future but it turns out just to be a spell. It makes Clary say these things to Jace but none of it's real of course. It's just more of Valentine's lovely manipulation. Luke and Jocelyn end up trying to find out where Clary's been taken. Luke ends up getting this Adamus stone. I can't remember, was this stone a thing in the book or not? I haven't done a reread of all of the books since City of Heavenly Fire came out. So it's been a couple of years. I can't remember whether this stone was actually a thing. But anyway, this stone does parabatai things dangerously. And Jocelyn goes back to the Institute and tells Alec and Izzy about this stone. Even though Alec doesn't trust Jocelyn, he agrees to use this stone to find Jace. So once again, we end up with a shirtless Alec lying on a bed trying to track his parabatai. Was the shirtlessness really necessary 
in this scene. I mean, I'm not complaining, but was it necessary? So while Salik was lying there, suffering, trying to find Jace, we got a bunch of really quick flashbacks to do with them being Parabatai. And we got a very, very quick glimpse of them as kids. I knew that we were going to get flashback scenes of them as children in the show this season. And I've been looking forward to seeing that. And so I was really happy that we got a little quick flash of that. So we end up with Alec could die tracking Jace round two. By the end of the episode, we still don't really know his fate. Episode three is going to deal with that. We go back to the boat and Gretel has been captured. She is apparently the wolf that killed Jeremy's father. She's the one that he's been looking to kill. So there she is, captured on this boat. Jace gets a little bit involved, questioning whether she did do this crime that she's accused of. I thought that Jeremy was going to step up to the plate in this scene and realise that what was going on was wrong. I don't know why I've got such big plans for Jeremy. We've only seen him very briefly, but I just feel like he needs to step it up. I'm rooting for you, Jeremy. You need to realise that revenge is not the right path. So yeah, I thought he was going to step in and save Gretel, but yeah, that didn't happen. Clary and Dot appear because Clary has convinced Dot to help her escape. The minute that Jace finds out Clary was under a spell earlier on, he tries to escape with her because, of course, he has no loyalty to Valentine, no matter what Valentine believes. Dot ends up opening a portal for them to escape through, but she doesn't get through it herself, so she's still stuck in Valentine's clutches by the end of this episode. Let's talk about that ending. Poor Gretel. I mean, I know she hasn't exactly been warm and welcoming to Simon, but I liked her. We don't actually know whether or not she's dead, but Valentine did the stab. He did the stab. It didn't look good. She should be dead, I think. Who knows? Dot wasn't dead. Gretel could still be alive and kicking, but it's not looking good for her at the moment. Jeremy, you let me down. No one was there to help save poor Gretel. So that was that. I thought it was a fantastic way to end the episode because it was a cliffhanger and it was a shocking moment as well. I really enjoyed this episode. Like I said at the start of the video, I felt like it was very fast paced, but it also didn't feel rushed. I like it when there's a lot packed into an episode without it being moved along too quickly. So I was really happy with the pacing this week. I really enjoyed the characters this week as well. I'm not sure how I feel about Jocelyn at the moment. Her actions so far haven't exactly been the best. Even though I understand why she's acting the way she is, she's not doing great things so far. So I'm not sure how I feel about her character at the moment, but everyone else on point. I've seen the promo for the next episode. It looks like poor Alex is going to be unconscious for the majority of it, and it seems to be about his fate. Also, the wolves are out for Jace because of Gretel. So episode three looks really exciting and I can't wait to see it. Once again, I'm just really happy with the direction that this season seems to be taking. It just seems like everything's so much better and I can't wait to see where it goes. So please do let me know your thoughts on episode two. Did you enjoy it? Did anything surprise you? As always, if there are things that I've forgotten to mention, feel free to talk about them and I will discuss. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye!